Hello everybody, this is Chris Butler with Rusty Barn. We're very excited to welcome you to Wild Wednesday Live. This is presented, of course, by the Quilt Craft and Sewing Festival. We're very, very close to being able to do live in-person shows, but until then, we really need your support. Thank you so much for all the support you've given us. Our vendors count on it. That's how they're staying in business until we get back to events, and us too, frankly. Um, we hope that you'll make our vendor mall your first stop in all your shopping needs and that you'll continue to tune in each week for the show. Thanks again, and we hope you enjoy this week's episode of Wild Wednesday Live, and we'll see you in the mall. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Wild Wednesdays Live, presented by the Quilt Craft and Sewing Festival. I'll be your host this week. I'm Raylene from Quilters Haven. And before we get started, you know, we always like to go through our little laundry list of reminders. And first of all, we want to just say that, you know, the vendors that are on the show today are going to be offering some special discounts. And uh, those are going to be good through tomorrow night, Thursday at midnight. So you don't want to waste time. If you see something you want, you want to get on there and get it. And the best way to find them is if you go to the Quilt Craft Sew Mall, there'll be a link to click on right below the Wild Wednesday logo. And when you click on that link, it's going to take you right to the four vendors that we have on today. Now, throughout the show, if you have questions, we ask that you hold those till the end. Make yourself a little note because at the end of the show, we're going to bring all four vendors back on and they'll be available to answer any of your questions live. And don't forget, if you ever miss an episode of Wild Wednesday Live, you can catch it after the fact on our YouTube channel, Quilt Craft Sew Mall. And be sure when you're there to subscribe so you never, ever miss an episode. And you can actually go back and watch all of the previous episodes that we've done. This is actually week 19. Can you believe we've been doing this for 19 weeks? So uh, if you ever want to go back and check them out, please do that. And of course, we're going to continue on with our raffle prizes that we'd be doing every week because everybody's seems to be having a great time of that. And by the way, last week was terrific. Everybody got those redeemed quickly and I didn't have to chase anybody down. So that was a good thing. So today we're going to be giving away a bag from Yazzie. We have a Dragons and Castles quilt kit. Uh, from Off the Wall Quilts. We have a gift certificate from Farrell's Country Stitching. We have a, a silver polishing cloth from Thimbles for You and an assortment of acrylic squares from Quilters Haven. So be sure you listen a little later on in the show when I give you that secret phrase that you'll type in to enter. And as a reminder, our show is streaming live over the internet with the internet. So on occasion, we may have a connection issue. Um, if we ever have a situation where, you know, the sound all of a sudden is just not going to clear up or a picture is not clearing up, we will stop the vendor, ask them to try to log back into the system. And if it's still a problem, then we'll stop them and reschedule them for a later date because you, we really don't want you to miss everything that they have to show you. So now we got all that out of the way, we are going to get started with our first vendor today. We're going to welcome back Julie from Off the Wall Quilts. Are you there, Julie? Hi, everybody. Hi. Good to there see she you is. again from Sunny, Hi. Sunny Florida. Hi. So here we awesome, are. Thanks awesome. Awesome. Yeah. No problem. Um, we're going to turn it over to you and let you get started because I know you're anxious to get going showing all these items today. So take it away. Okay. Thanks. So today I'm not coming to you from home. Uh, one of the fun things about being a quilt show vendor is you get to visit a lot of people. And today we're at the Fabric Warehouse in Lakeland, Florida. So um, this is Allison, the manager here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and she's letting us use a corner of their beautiful shop house. And um, I'm really excited to share a big announcement with you guys and to give you a little uh, early bird treat. So we are getting ready to move our warehouses. We currently work out of three warehouses and we're moving into one big one. So uh, it's exciting and a huge, huge job. And I want to invite all of you to come help us move. Not really. You don't want to come to Florida in May and help us move. It's going to be a hot, sweaty job. But um, you can help us by helping us reduce some of the inventory that we need to 
Julie, can uh, you hear me? Back into caring. So, yeah, so Julie, if you can hear me, we are actually having a we're having a bad connection for this week <laughs> for you guys. Is on sale to the public on yes. Okay, is it telling me there's a bad connection? Yeah, Julie, Hello. if you can hear me, can you hear me, we've got a really bad connection. Can you see me? Um, we're not getting very good sound or picture from you. So if you can hear me, if you can log out and try signing back on. Go back to me. Hey guys. So again, didn't I just say sometimes we have an issue. So, um, we're going to see if Julie can sign back on and if she has a little better connection. And if not, then we'll just reschedule her to come back. But, uh, in the meantime, again, I just want to remind you that, uh, you know, the live shows are coming. Uh, we actually have several shows scheduled now, uh, starting at the end of May in Boise, Idaho. Then we have Oklahoma City scheduled. We have, oh my goodness, uh, we have Denver. We have Castle Rock. Um, we also have Sacramento, the Inland Empire, Inland Empire, San Bernardino. So we do have some shows coming up. And if you just go to the Quilt Craft Sewing Festival Facebook page, you'll see all the listings with the dates, the locations, and be sure you sign up on their email if any of those shows are in your area. So, okay, I think we got Julie back. Let's see how there, can, can you hear us, Julie? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, much better. Yes. <laughs> Okay, what? I'm sorry. There we are. No, that's okay. We um we got on Wi-Fi, so I think we'll be okay. Okay, you're great now. Okay. Did you hear anything of what I said? Just a very intermittent, so I think it'd be best if you repeated it. Okay, Allison. Okay, we're going to do it again. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. We're, we're connected now. Anyways, um, today we're not at home. We are in Lakeland, California. Florida. 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 Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Okay, let's try that again. Lakeland, Florida. I don't know if there's a Lakeland, California. Um, anyways, we are at Fabric Warehouse, and we're delivering a special order of rulers to our friends here. And I'd like to introduce you to Allison. She is the store manager. Hello. <laughs> and they have a beautiful store, and they're very friendly. So if you're in the area, uh, come and meet our friends. So um, we have a great big announcement. We're very excited. We are moving our three warehouses into one big one. So we'll all be working together and things will be more organized. And we have a huge job to pack and move all of that inventory. So we wanted to invite you to come and help us. No, you don't want to come and help move things in, in May. But you could really help us by... Um, helping us to lighten the load a bit. Uh, we need to reduce some of our inventory. So we're going to have a great big public sale uh, with 30% off of everything starting Friday. But we're going to give you an early bird discount today and tomorrow. And so there's the coupon code early bird and it'll give you 30% off any order $30 or higher. Now, this is important because many of our items, we only have one or two of. So by getting early bird access, you guys get first pick of what we've got. And I want to show you some of the fun stuff that we've been digging up. Some of it's standard and some of it we just found. For example, we found a few more of our wonderful vintage clocks. So those will be 30% uh, off. We, this is one of our favorites. It's um, laser cut out of a record clock with a nice sewing theme. We've got a few of those left. And then uh, just a, all of our quilting rulers are on sale and these have been a couple of our best sellers. This is a rocket and a moon. Now I didn't use it for long arming. I used it to do applique to make a really cute little quilt. There's a picture on our website of that. And then this is our very, very popular beginning set for long arm ruler or learning to do ruler work. And you get three rulers and a four page handout there of ideas of what to do with the rulers. So you can order any of these and more for that 30% off deal. Um, this is really fun. We thought we were sold out of engraved uh, tumblers and we found a whole box so they're all different colors they're they've got different sayings this is a really popular one winos women in need of 
sewing. So those are really fun. They make great gifts. Um, this is another uh, one of, this is an eighth inch ruler. So you don't use this uh, for ruler work so much as for applique or for decorating. Um, that's a really fun one. And then we have our very, very practical ones that people like. We've got flying geese in three different sizes. We've got drunkard's paths in three different sizes. Uh, the notch in the middle there was requested. So all you have to do is clip your two pieces together at the notch and sew your curve and make a that have old logos on them. So for example, this is a seven inch square. It is marked down to $5 and you get the 30% off. So make sure that you uh, dig around a bit on our website and find the sale items and get the additional discount on those as well. And something else crazy that we found that we forgot we had was some really fun sewing jewelry. So it's, it's just a beautiful vintage sewing machine, four pairs of earrings. And again, that's all included in the sale. So um, we want to encourage you to come and uh, dig around on the website, like I said, and help to lighten the load because uh, it's going to be a really big job. And um, we're excited. We have add col added color printing onto our acrylic rulers, and we need more space to be able to do that. So uh, stay tuned for more beautiful and easy to see uh, rulers from off the wall quilt and come and place your order. Oh, I know. People were asking me, and our, our staff was asking if even the personalized rulers are 30% off, and you know they are. So this is a great time to um, stock up for Christmas. You know, your quilting friends would love a ruler with their name on it. So uh, I hope you guys will come and uh, take a box or two off of our hands and help us get moved. And I promise you we'll come back on once we do get moved and give you a quick tour of the new warehouse and have some more specials for you then. But in the meantime, happy shopping. So that's what I've got for today, Raylene. Wait, get on her website right after the show so that you make sure you get uh, first dibs on some of those one of a kinds they have left and help her lighten the load so they can get moved. So we're excited for you, Julie, in your new location. We can't wait to see it. Thanks. And uh, she's going to do her best to be around at the end of the show for question and answer. She's kind of mobile right now, but uh, we hope she'll be able to be there. So thanks a lot, Julie. We'll see you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. So don't forget, in just a few minutes, we'll be giving you that secret phrase to enter today's contest. But before we do that, we are going to welcome back one of our favorites, uh, Yasmita from Yazzie Bags. And I hope you guys realize she's actually coming to us live from Australia. It is Thursday morning for her where she's at. So she is really committed to being on the show that she gets up super, super early so that she can be ready to go with us. So hi, Yasmita. Hello, Raylene. How are you? I am great. And I'm so excited about the bag that you're showing today because I think it's one of the best things you guys have. Of course, I think that about all your stuff, but I love this bag you're about to show. So I'm going to turn it right over to you so you can share it with our viewers. Okay. Thank you for that. Before I show you the bag that we've got a great offer on, the little gift that we're offering today, you know, the one that we uh, offer each time. This time we're giving you these two pouches that fit perfectly in my oval sewing box. So when you look at it, this is $22.95 on my website and the two pouches are $11. So it's $33.95 in total. And that's the gift Yazzie International has uh, offered for this particular episode. So I just wanted you to have a look at it. And the next thing is I want to show you the bag in question is our Maxi Yazzie, which is the code is CA375 on the website. It's $134.95. This takes about 20 hours for one of the artisans to make it on a treadle machine for you. There's a lot of components, a lot of zippers going into this bag. We're offering you three pouches that come along with it because you always have little items to save in there. 
we've also given you a little a block storage case that carries 14 by 14 blocks in uh, the bag. So this is a three piece bag. And we also offering you the base where you can keep a lot of your fabrics for your retreats, other articles, you can keep your magazines, your books. And in there, we've got this little bag that takes 14 by 14 blocks. We're giving you the three pouches as well with that help you organize everything so that will be the second part and the bag itself is the third now each of these pockets are horizontal they've all got a gusset on each side so you've got a lot of room to put lots of product in there and it just gives you that organization and i will tell you that if you feel you prefer the longer pocket and you don't like this division in this area we've given you two of the divisions and one full you can just unpick this little middle be careful obviously but i mean generally i've seen people say it's very easy because it's how they want to use it we cannot uh, dictate or plan the bag exactly as someone decides to use it but the options are there so this is in here you can keep your threads in here then you've got the bottom layer as well they large and this top layer, you can keep your books and anything you need, your notions, your supplies. So this becomes a complete bag for any retreat, any classes, anything you do. And I must say, this is the first time in 20 years we provided a bag that fits your blocks perfectly. And this was the last bag we did in our larger bags. And because they take 20 hours, it does and each pocket i want you to know that someone sits on the floor and cuts each uh, uh pocket the plastic pockets individually and gives it to the person who's working the bag and sewing the bag i mean you know, on the treadle machine uh and the time it takes the effort is involved there's almost 30 zippers in these bags so you can work out as a crafter what's involved and i know it's about 20 hours we sort of get some in 21 hours it depends who they are but we cannot find this skill even in india anymore the world is changing and we need to appreciate it i love the fact that when i'm at the shows and i'll find people tell me like a lot of, um, you know, major crafters who we all know, and I won't mention names, but they come to me and say, this bag is worth over a thousand dollars to any crafter who knows what's involved to make it. Try going and buying all the raw material, try to figure out a pattern and try to make it. It'll never finish. You cannot make a bag like this, but it does work because these are beautifully crafted. They handcrafted bags on a treadle machine. And my larger ones take 20 hours. We've got others that are $15, $11. It's not about anything except respecting people who are working as hard as they do and as i said i'm having so much trouble keeping my prices at this level because even they demanding a lot more so we've been pretty good for three years held back all our prices and uh i was planning to in in houston last year to add my percentage you know to increase the prices and it never worked out so we're still okay till june and there will be a slight increase but after three years i don't think it's unfair so that's one of them the next uh, uh product i want to show you while we at it is uh this is the special we've got where you've got 134.95 and we're offering you 20 percent off from this price that makes it, um, oh, it's 107.96 to you. And now with your discount, as well as we're giving it to you on a free freight basis from Kentucky. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant offer for this bag only for this episode. And it's up to you if you feel like you wanna take advantage of it. We sell plenty of these bags and uh, we also felt that I wanted to share with you because the internal that block storage case uh, many crafters would come to me and say 
We love that block storage case. We've always wanted something for our blocks. Can we not buy them loose? Like I'd like to add to this bag, maybe have a couple. I work on three or four quilts and I'd like to keep them individually. So I did go out and prepare another bag, another style of a bag that I thought would work quite well. This is just this little idea that I had. I put a little handle thinking that it might be a little awkward in case you don't want to buy the big bag for whatever reason. I've at least been able to give you this and instead of having it where you carrying it, you've got a little handle to hold it. And I think that's a brilliant little bag and the retail price on that this particular bag is $19.90. So you can see we have given you the option. Some people are just adding it in this bag. It fits perfectly or you can buy it individually. Then I had a request in that same year as I introduced these bags. This was the first. Then the one I just showed you was the second. They said we'd like more uh, blocks to be in a bag and we'd like a larger one. So this is definitely... A larger one and the dimensions are here so you can keep all your blocks you can keep everything you need it's a huge bag and you'll be surprised how many you've got a see-through window on the top that you can and you've got a little handle as well now this was not made for this bag it's just an individual one if you want it this is $35 on my website and there is no uh, discount on it but we do have that ongoing offer where you will get the two pouches if you order over 75 dollars but don't confuse it with this offer and you will get the free freight if your order in continental usa is 50 dollars plus and if it's 75 uh, from canada alaska and um hawaii so again, I want to show you the bigger one that's here. This is the largest CA370. It's $35 on my website. And I have a very dear friend in Australia from Queensland who does sashiko embroidery. And she's actually embellished her bag like this. It's, uh, yeah, I think it's the light is not right here. And this is the bag she's embellished. So she does teach these classes, and I think it's beautiful. She's just made this her own bag and takes her blocks everywhere. So that's where we are with these three items, and I thought this is the first time we've ever given that 20% right off the front discount, and it's only valid till tomorrow night, and the voucher that uh, we've got is, I think it's, W W Yaz Y A Z. Uh, if you can read up on it, I just don't have that information right in front here, but I definitely had set up a voucher. It will be in the information area that Raylene mentioned where you can see the four vendors for today. And I hope you enjoyed what you saw. And it is a fabulous bag. You've got lots of options. We've got some discontinued items on our website where, uh, because we're not coming, not for any other reason, we're definitely offering you a 25% discount there. And uh, we've got beautiful silk bags for your jewelry, your makeup, if you want to look for them as magical gifts. That'll work quite well. And uh, is look, I... I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate uh, you watching us today and uh, hopefully we'll catch you the next time we go live with Wild Wednesday. Thank you for watching. Bye. Thank, thank you, Yasmita. That was awesome. Awesome, awesome. And guys, if you've never seen her bags in person, I'm going to tell you the quality is second to none. These bags will last you. If you take care of these, they will last you forever and ever. So um, be sure you jump on her website and you know check it out. Look at everything. And her, her code, um, I should have it in front of me, but I don't. But uh, it is, if you click on that link right below the Wild Wednesday logo in the mall, it's going to be listed there for you. So Yasmita, we hope you can stick around for questions and answers yeah, yeah. and we'll see you in just a few minutes thank you so Bye. much Bye. okay guys it's that time it's contest time. I know you guys hate contests, right? Well, that's okay. You're going to do it anyway. So <laughs> I told you the five prizes at the beginning of the show. So now for those of you that are new with us, 
I'm about to give you a code word. All you have to do to enter is to type that code word in the comments. We ask that you only do that one time so that I don't have to take the time to filter out the duplicates. After the show, usually in about an hour, I will post the winners right here on the Quilt Craft Sewing Festival Facebook page, and it will tell you what you need to do to uh, claim your prize. So again, Give me about an hour after the show ends and I should have that up. So be sure you check back. And if you know if you don't like to win free stuff, this just don't put the word in. That's fine. But we know most of you guys do. So today's word, very creative, Easter. So all you have to do is type in the word Easter in the comments and that will enter you in the drawing. Okay, so moving on. Next, we have uh, Stephanie from Farrell's Country Stitching. You know, we had her on a few weeks ago, and we got such an amazing response to what she showed us that we asked her to come back and elaborate on that some. So Stephanie's got some more super fun stuff to show us. So Stephanie, are you there? I sure am. Hi, welcome back. Thank you. Listen, I'm so excited. I told you last time you were on because I've never had time to watch you in your booth because obviously I was always working in mine. I was watching you and I swear I was punching Ron going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It was the most fascinating thing to me. I was so excited and I can't wait to start uh, doing this myself. So I'm really excited to have you back on. So I'm going to turn it over to you so you can show us the next step here. So take it away. Thanks, Raylene. Okay, before I really get started, I'm going to have Dusty zoom in on this because I forget the codes every time. So screenshot the screen right now because I will forget this, I promise. Okay, wonderful. So these are the five tools that I'm going to be talking about today. This is our expansion set. So for those of you that took advantage of our beginner set last time, this is kind of the next step. So these are all path easy tools. So this is part of our, um, this is what makes us special. Um, our tools are designed specifically that they work in the path. So I have two of the feet. So I have the mini foot, which I'm the only one who makes a mini foot. And I have the half inch foot. So this is the size foot that everybody else makes. So this foot is great and it works wonderfully. Um, but for us, it only fits in this really wide path, which means you're going to need a really large quilting design, um, which is fine if you're doing big quilts, but if you're doing smaller things, you want obviously a smaller pattern. So I have on my small foot because I am going to be using the mini templates. So I have on the mini foot and I'm going to start with my very favorite tool. Um, this is our swirls. So this is the mini swirls. And I've got little grip dots on the back of this template. And the foot, I'm going to just drop it right down in that little groove there. Needle down, needle up. Bring the bobbin thread to the top. And back down in the groove there. And now I'm going to just do a couple of stitches back and forth to lock that in. And I'm even using metallic thread this time. I know, scary, right? So, but I'm using my thread director, so I don't have to worry. Because with your thread director, you can run any kind of thread you want. So I'm just going to stitch all the way around. And I don't have to worry at all because my foot just rides in that groove. gives me perfect quilting every time and I don't even have to try hard. Now that I'm at the end of the path, I'm going to stop there, needle down, and then all I'm going to do is turn my template 180 degrees, and I'll just keep stitching. And I can do this the entire way across my quilt. So I do a row of quilting at a time without ever having to stop, reposition, 
And another thing that makes this so wonderful is even when and if, you know, it happens, uh, you would break a thread, it's so easy to pick right up where you broke the thread that you can't even tell. It's that, I mean, it's really that simple. You could just start right where you broke the thread and, and pick right up and you're off and running again. Now, I'm going to pull this down because I want to be sure to show you how to nest the template. And this one is so easy to do. Let me see if I can cut my thread here. But see how neat that looks? So you get perfect quilting. It looks wonderful. And then when you come down to do the next row, this template is going to, from I you know started here in this position. So now all I'm going to do is slide this directly below. And this template, this, this big curl here is going to nest right up between these ones on the bottom. So you don't ever get that um, line of space between the rows. So it doesn't look like you stitched it out in rows. You know, if you go down too far, you'll get that area of unquilted fabric that doesn't really look very nice, you know, um, because we want to avoid that. We want people to think we really know what we're doing. So um, we try, you know, fake it till you make it kind of thing. Um, so now when I do this, you'll be able to see right away what I'm talking about of how seamless it looks. And it truly looks like I I picked the quilt up from the long armor. And, you know, somebody who really truly is a professional did this quilting. And it wasn't just me on my little home machine doing my own quilting. And the more and more comfortable you become with it, the faster and faster you'll be, of course. Um, tomorrow night, we're going to be doing this in my class. Um, I, with the pandemic, you know, we've been teaching classes online um, two or three days a week. And so um, tomorrow night's classes, we're quilting a quilt we've made um, over the last couple of weeks. So this is going to actually be the template that I'm going to be stitching my quilt with. Um, this week. And a little reverse. There we go. So, but see how nice that looks? It looks like I just, you know, just like it would look if I had taken my quilt somewhere and had it quilted. And I mean, it looks good. Nobody will ever know. Um, these are, like I said, the other four, five templates because the set comes with six. And I'll show you what another one stitches out like. But I do have all of them stitched right here. And I just did a small amount of them so that you could see them stitched in reverse or, you know, two rows so that you could see how they all nested. Um, but they are lovely. So, um, and the discount, so like uh, we're doing the um, the set. So the expansion set normally um, runs at, at the shows we do them for, what do we do them for? $65. Um, and we're doing them for $49.99 um, on Wild, for Wild Wednesday. And then if you don't already have a mini ruler foot, you can get it with the foot for $99.99. So that's a huge saving. So six templates and the foot for $99.99. Um, I believe that's saving you like $50, $60 off regular retail. Um, so it's a really good deal. And we have tons of YouTube videos. So you can always go to YouTube at feralscountrystitching.com and, and be able to watch videos on every single template. And like I said, we've, we've been teaching about three days a week. So you can always look us up on Facebook and what? Don't you have an upcoming class on these also? Yes, I do have an upcoming class on these too. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you this. This is my next favorite in the group. So this is our heart leaves or ivy. It kind of looks like ivy, but it's a really nice design. A really nice all over. It looks bright in a border. Um, but also makes a great all over design and leaves are one of those things, you know, it doesn't, 
it's pretty gender neutral. You know, you can do it on a guy's quilt. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter if it's, you know, it's not gender specific. Um, generally, guys don't want heart quilts stuck and things like that. You know, they don't want flowers. So the only thing you have to remember was when you're doing uh, the templates, anytime you have a point, you know, something where you're coming clear out into a point like this, when you come out there, you want to make sure you're, you kind of pause out there in that space because you need to make a complete stitch in that space. Otherwise, you'll get this rounded off uh, point and it really doesn't look very nice. So just kind of a little pause out there so you get a nice sharp point every time. And just follow right along in that path. And you really will get a beautiful design. And it's not overly difficult. They usually tell people practice for about an hour and when you're practicing, don't practice on something big. Fat quarters, no bigger than a fat quarter, just start practicing. You don't want to, you know, don't start on a king size quilt. You know, fat quarters to start and, and play with a template until you feel comfortable. It's not instantaneous. You know, each one takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of getting used to. Um, before, you know, you become really comfortable with it. Um, but once the light bulb comes on and you get that aha moment, then, you know, it's no holds barred. Then you start flipping and turning and coming up with new design ideas and, oh, I could do this or I could do that. Um, you know, things really kind of open up at that point. But these designs themselves are wonderful because there is no, you know, these are just for, great for all over or for border. You know, you can use them either way. They're not necessarily great for in blocks, but they're perfect for all over designs, which I know myself, I do a lot of quilting that's all over the entire quilt surface. So, you know, especially you know, if I'm doing a kid's quilt or something, I don't need to do fancy things in all the blocks. I can do something that's an all over design over the entire surface of, of the quilt um, without, you know, having to think twice about it. I can get it done rel relatively quickly and I need to be able to see the clock. <laughs> I needed to be able to pay attention so I don't run over. Anyway, so um, I'm going to go ahead and do the second roll of this so that I can show you exactly how this nests. Okay. There we go. There we are. That bobbin thread up to the top again. And off we go. And I love the fact that this metallic thread looks so nice. And did you notice? I haven't broken the thread one time. All thanks to this thread director. a little back stitch at the end of each row just to make sure that my stitches are locked in there. I don't want them to come out. There we go. 
And you can see how nice that is. And see how the rows kind of interlock and you don't have a direct line in between. So you don't have that, um, you know, direct line of sight in between the rows. So it doesn't look like you stitched it in rows. So anyways, just a reminder, these are the codes for the discount. So you can um, use those anytime between now and midnight tomorrow night. And um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. You can reach us anytime on our website and we're happy to help. That was so awesome. I'm so excited. It's like, you know what? I, uh, I'm ordering it this time. I didn't do it last time and I'm not going to put it off when this show is over before I do any, well, as soon as I do the contest, <laughs> I'm going to get mine ordered because I, you know, I don't know what priority straight. Really. I know. I know. And Ron's sitting here going like, and what exactly you're going to do with that? Cause he knows me all too well, but you know, someday I'm going to have time and I want to have everything ready to go <laughs> because it's like, you know, when you have time, you need to have it on hand so you can get going on it. Right. That's right. Well, I hope you'll stick around for a few more minutes so that we can do our Q&A at the end of the show. Thank I you so much. Will. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Okay, guys, this is your last reminder. If you did not already do this, be sure you type in today's secret word to be entered into the door price drawing. It's Easter. And uh, before we go to our last vendor, though, you know, we love to do a roll call because we love knowing where everybody's watching from. So just take a second, type in the city and state that you're watching us from, because when I go back afterwards, I go through all the four or five hundred comments and I really enjoy seeing where everybody's visiting us from. So, OK, so next up, um, we are bringing back another one of the favorite vendors that we've had. We're going to bring in Jan for from Thimbles for You. She's a very accomplished silversmith who makes beautiful, beautiful thimbles. So hi, Jan. How are you? Hey, I'm good, Raylene. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. It's good to have you on again. And uh, I'm not going to waste any more time because I know everybody's anxious to see some of your beautiful, beautiful pieces. So take it away. Very good. Thank you. Like she said, I am a silversmith. I make and sell sterling silver thimbles and sewing tools. Um, I was a fashion design major in college, and so I know all about your sewing needs. In fact, I still make a lot of my own clothes. This is a Chatelaine. The Chatelaine was in a Victorian era purse or pocket that the women of that time frame um, used to hold all of their, their important things that they needed for the day. They often had a little bottle of perfume, a small little velvet pouch with a few coins in it, um, a pencil, a pair of scissors. But it, at that time, they hooked it on with a little uh, clip to the waistband of their skirt. Um, these days, we still use chatelaines, but we're now wearing them on uh, chains around our neck because that way they're right in our work zone and we do most of our work sitting down instead of standing up like the Victorians did. So this is one, I entered a big, since it's COVID this year, I entered a big jewelry uh, design contest and this is one of the pieces that won one of the big designs. I hope you can see it. It's uh, Lily of the Valley flowers and a butterfly in the center and then it has all the loops on the bottom and that carries all of your sewing tools. Now everybody when they come to my booth want, it, want me to walk through the tools so I'm going to do that real quickly for you right now. Um, this is a needle threader and thread cutter. It has a thread cutter on the back. Uh, there's a round blade and where there's a space, a little uh, notch in the, the front piece, you can cut your threads right there. Uh, the needle threader is down here. I don't know if, yeah, we can see it. Um, there's a needle threader there and it has a sterling silver uh, tube to cover it. You just wiggle it a little bit to get it to stick on there. And you can see there's a chain that goes all the way from the bottom up to the top and that way you'll never lose your lid. If it does come off while you're working, it'll be hanging right there beside it. The next piece, which is actually my favorite, is the scissors, sheath, and chain. The scissors are usually the ballast or the centering um, holding piece of the whole thing. It's usually the longest piece on your chatelaine and so you should be able to um, hold all the pieces together with that one. The scissors come out of their sheath while they're still attached by a chain to the chatelaine. And so you can take them out and you can use them and leave them hanging on your chatelaine even when the sheath isn't on. 
Um, so if you're working in a car, an airplane, which is what I'm often doing, um, you can just take them out and use them for a few minutes, leave them hanging there. When you're done, you put them back in their sheath and leave them hanging on their shed on the chain. Um, the centerpiece on most chatelaines is the thimble. Um, the thimbles are my big thing. I will spend the rest of our time here after I get through this telling you how to fit your thimble. And so this is the, the main thing. The cage uh, hinges at the bottom and uh, opens at the top. You can take your thimble out and put it on your finger, leave the cage hanging there. This is a nice cage for um, any of your heirloom thimbles as well. You don't, it doesn't have to be one that you're using. If you have one from a grandmother or an aunt, they're very um, handy to turn that piece into a um, whole necklace. So you can see if you were wearing just this one cage piece with a nice heirloom thimble in it, it would be really pretty as a necklace. Uh, the next piece on this chatelaine is the needle case, needle keeper. It's a small silver tube, usually decorated. Um, most of them are one of a kinds um, with a, a lid that was made specially for that tube. Again, the two pieces are chained together. So you can see they won't come apart. The lid is always going to be there. And even when it's not connected, the, the um, spring ring will um, keep the lid from falling off. And the last piece on this particular chatelaine is a waxer. This is a, a locket with beeswax inside. You can lay your thread on there, hold it with your thumb, and just pull it through the wax. This is refillable by you at home. Just put a few chips of, of beeswax in there and uh, melt the current piece down and, and add adhere by heat, just a really low heat, um, the, the new pieces to that. So anytime that I'm sewing, and especially when I'm traveling sewing, I have my Chatelaine on, so I'm going to wear that while I'm working today. Um, I want to talk a little bit about fitting thimbles. That's one of the things that we all Jan, can you hear me? Hello, Jan. We've lost your sound. Yeah, yeah we aren't getting there. Whoop, you're coming back. Okay. I don't know why that happened. I don't either, but you're back now. That's the most important part. Thank so you. <laughs> okay. I appreciate that. So, a lot of us think that we have very round fingers, and a lot of us do have round fingers. There's a round thimble for a round finger. Many of our fingers are also oval, a flatter oval. You can see that that one is a little bit more oval. And then there's a third size that's a little less common, and it's a bit square. So you will, you will have to look at the end of your finger. If you look this way, straight on to your finger, look and see if it's square or oval or round. And that's how you'll be doing some of the choosing for your thimble style. So I wanted to show you all three of those different shapes of the, the shaft or the length of your finger. So those three shapes matter a lot in choosing the correct thimble. Another thing that matters a lot, and I hope I can get my picture down here just right. There we go. Another thing that matters a lot is the length of it. And when we go to measure for a thimble, uh, length or height has to be measured of your finger too. So your finger has Ha we all have a different length between the end of our finger and that first joint. Many of us have kind of a funny bump on that first joint from where our pencil kind of hits our finger. And so think about that as you're measuring. The measuring technique that I use is both measure around this, the base of your nail and give me that measurement, very, very careful measurement in millimeters. And then measure again around the um, largest part of that first knuckle. Now, normally, uh, thimbles are worn on the middle finger of the dominant hand. When you do it, you're going to be holding your needle in your index finger and thumb, and the thimble should be the motor behind that needle. And so you're going to put your thimble right down here and push through with it. Now, the mechanics of all of our hands, both the index and the middle finger and the third finger, um, is different for every person. And so some of us have real short index, some have a really long one. 
And so that will depend on where you will hit on your on your thimble with your needle. Um, depends on what the mechanics of your own hand is and kind of what kind of learning or what what you've been taught about how this works. I have thimbles of all different sizes and shapes. You can see that this one is very tall and very large. It covers well past the first knuckle on my finger. And so I need it to be big enough at the base, the, the bottom of it, to cover that whole knuckle. And so my particular finger is about a four and a half on the really short spot and a six when you get down into the knuckle. You can see that there's quite a bit of difference. And so there's a nice big one that goes clear down, way down over my knuckle, has a really nice look to it because it's very long. There are other long ones that are less gnarly and heavy. The gnarlier, the, the more silver, of course, makes it quite a bit heavier. This is an open nail one that's also long enough and big enough at the bottom. It's a size six and a half that it will go over my knuckle easily and it'll go all the way down. This is what you want when you're fitting a thimble. You want your finger to be solidly on the end, the top of the inside of the thimble and tight enough so that when you dangle it upside down, the thimble does not fall off. Now, most of us, when we are sewing, um, will need to get a little bit of moisture in there. Whether you use uh, a little bit of, of spitting, <laughs> lick, your, lick your finger and stick it in. Don't do that on my displays. But lick your finger and stick it in your own thimble and use it that way. That really does help it to stay on. Silver is an amazing conductor of heat, and so the silver thimbles will not make you get sweaty and hot on the inside. They will just keep conducting that heat if your fingers get warm from overuse or if you've eaten some a lot of sugar right before you sit down and you kind of sweat when you first get going. Um, the silver will just continue to conduct that heat outward, and it'll go out into the neighborhood. So don't worry about that. This is why silver is such a great... Um, conductor and why it's such a nice thimble. This is another closed top thimble. It has a quilt rim. It has uh, plenty of dimples all the way around. The dimples in my thimble are very different than the dimples in the thimbles that you will buy at your stores. My dimples go halfway through the silver and they have a flat bottom. And so when your needle gets into a dimple, it will sit in that dimple and it will hang on to the edges. Can you see how that's moving and not going anywhere? You can go to all kinds of crazy angles and it will not come out. All of my dimples on all of my thimbles have a round hole and a square bottom in it and they go halfway through the wall of the um, sterling silver. They also all have a lifetime guarantee, so I will repair and replace anything that happens to your thimble forever. I just was working on a couple of them today that had worked all the way through them. It's easiest for me at a show if I can just trade you for another one of the same size or style, or if you're ready for a new one, that's fine too. Um, then when I get them home, I will take Find that hole that you that you made by pushing in that same dimple over and over. I'll put a little piece of um, silver wire through the hole, and then I'll solder it on the inside, and I will clean that all up and polish it and re-harden it in the kiln overnight, and then uh, remake the dimple just where it was before. So there is there are a lot of repairs that I am perfectly able to take care of, and so that's what we do there too. This one also has a quilt rim. I just noticed a lot of them that I pulled out here have quilt rims on top. A lot of you who are quilters love these quilt rims because they do help you to um, capture and hold the thimble in place. When you're doing your um, quilting, rocking quilting, uh, now I've got a really long needle because I wanted to show you. I've got my finger underneath and I'm pushing up on the end of the needle and I'm pushing down from the top on the, the eye end of the needle. I push toward my thumbnail. See how I've got my thumbnail just barely under that end so that it can come up and down and up and down. And don't worry the first few times that you do it. If you don't get all your stitches just the right length, this is a practice session. We want you to learn how to use the thimble and learn how to do the, the um, technique properly. So you should be squeezing from your finger toward your thumb pushing it together. And when you're quilting, you want to load up your whole needle before you take the time to, you want to load it clear up and then take the time to pull it on through. So again, 
for quilting, it's like this. Putting it up in that quilt rim, pushing down and back and down and back. And my thumb on this other side keeps pushing up underneath that to make my stitch as short as possible. When I get to the end of the stitch, my index finger is ready to receive the needle and to pull it out. Okay, if you're doing bindings, it's a little bit different technique, and a lot of us use a different part of the um, needle and a different part of the thimble um, to do the, the hems and bindings. So, this is just my sample piece, but you can see I don't put my thimble right on the end, of course, because I'm just taking one stitch. So, when I get ready for that stitch, I go under and back and see where my thimble is. We're heading on the side. Mostly I hit right up on this corner when I'm pushing through. So you have to think of what works for you, where it's going to hit on your thimble. This particular thimble has a little rim along that edge so that you won't accidentally push your, poke yourself in the finger, but rather that rim will catch it and keep it from going through. So I, I know that there's a lot of quilters who do um, long arm and uh, then the bindings often get done by hand, especially if you're doing them for judging. You want to do your bindings by hand. And so that's, um, this is a good technique for getting the bindings done by hand. Now we started with the really tall thimbles over here. We're working down to the really short ones. And I just want to show you what the differences are. This is another one that's kind of a medium length. It does not have the quilt rim on top. It just has a plain rounded top, which is often a little bit easier for doing uh, the binding techniques. You fold over your fabric. You've got just a little bit of binding. You're only taking one stitch at a time. It can still get up underneath that nail guard and push from there, but you can also push from right over here. There's a lot of places and your, your needle will just stick in one of those holes. And most people just use that same hole over and over and over again. You don't have to pull back and poke with the end of your finger. You can just continually keep the needle right in that spot. And those are the ones that come back to me for repairs because as you keep your finger in that same hole over and over, eventually a stainless steel needle is harder than a sterling silver thimble. Eventually you'll drill yourself a hole right through that one um, dimple and then you'll have some work to do cleaning it up. Another one of my favorites, and this is a very oval thimble, is the acorn thimble. This one just feels so good to me. It was one of the first designs that I did when I kind of launched out on my own. Um, it has a gemstone in the center, and I can do any of about 35 different gems. Some of them are faceted, and some are cabochons or a, a heap style, a, a mound rather than a facets. Um, this one is really gnarly on the outside. So even though it does not have the quilted rim, it has lots of ridges and lots of uh, spots in where the um, leaves and the leaf veins come together. And this is why we use the middle finger, because you can see you can hit almost anywhere on there and push it on through. And you still got your index finger ready to receive the needle when it comes back out of the fabric. So just think about that as you're working. And again, the this is a nice comfortable thimble. It does not, you don't get all sweaty when you're using it. It's very comfortable and easy to use. If your finger happens to be round and your favorite style is this beautiful oval one, you can take a tool and change that. So, I have a tool, this particular pair of pliers gets bigger when I squeeze, instead of getting smaller and tighter when I squeeze, it gets bigger. So I can put this on the inside of my thimble and I can squeeze just a little bit. I hope you can see that wrist. Hope you can see that. Squeeze just a little bit, squeeze just a little bit, squeeze a little bit. And because this is silver, it's nice and soft. We get a little bit rounder on the inside. Those of you who have really round fingers, I'll just work a little harder and I'll get it there for you. Um, my, my middle finger that I do most of my thimbling with is rather oval. So this is a style that really works well for me. So there are tools that you can use to do this. If I wanna turn it back to round, most of us have one of these um, lock locking pliers and you can just grab a hold of it and pull it back down. I don't know if you can see the movement, but there is a little movement there. Pull it right back down into that oval shape that it started in. 
And on me, that's too tight right here now. So I want to go back and put this back up where it was just a little bit so it doesn't hurt my finger. It should be a very comfortable fit with your thimble. It should not feel like you're feeling your pulse in there. But I do know that all of our fingers change in size and shape with what we eat and with what the weather's like. If it's too hot or too cold, things do change. So take a look on my website and see what you can find. I have a lot of different sizes and shapes, and there are some nice tutorial videos that will help you figure out how to do your measuring. Don't be afraid to contact me in person. My phone number and my email are both on my website as well. Jan, that was so awesome. Thank you so much. I know, guys, last time she was on, they were having a blizzard, so her yeah. connection wasn't real good. But yeah, today was incredible. awesome. Oh, I'm, you know, it's late. I know we have some guys that watch the show as well, but you know what? Yeah. Just, just don't pay attention for a minute. Ladies, Mother's Day. Put yeah. the word out. Oh, when someone I, says to you, what do you yeah. want? <laughs> Here's my special for this time. Oh, can I get him up there? Um, it's a bunny wabbit. Can you see my oh, little bunny? That it's is free, cute. Free shipping until May 1. This is a brand new piece. Just got it out this week. It's on all the social media, but it's a real cutie. And I'm giving you guys free shipping until May 1. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I hope you can stick around for just a few minutes till we get sure. to the Q&A. Okay, guys, um, you know, we're going to start our question and answer period here in just a second. Ron is going to be bringing all the vendors back on the screen. We call this uh, going Brady Bunch style here. We get everybody back up. So if you have any questions for any of today's vendors, just right now, type them in the comments and we are going to do our best to not to miss anybody's question. So I know some of you guys put some in quite a while ago. So hopefully you remember your question. You can retype it um, because there's no way I'm going to be able to go back through all these and find them. So, so let's see. Okay. Um, first question coming from Rondi, one of our regular uh, viewers. She wants to know from Jan, do you have a thimble with an American flag? Not yet. Who's the second one that's asked me about that recently? Maybe I'll work on that for the 4th of July. There you go. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, we're just kind of scrolling back just a little bit here. Give us just a second. Okay. Um, also for Jan, we have Jane, another one of our regular viewers asking, can you use any thimble if you have long nails? Um, there's open nail thimbles and closed top thimbles. The open nails are great for long nails. There's also a tailor's thimble and there's a Yubi Nuki band. It's a Japanese band style thimble. And so any of those, it's the closed top ones that you're not going to like if you've got long nails. Great. Um, next. Boy, this is great. A lot of regular faces I see on here. See, I know I recognize everybody from doing the contest every week. You've done this um, for a while, really. <laughs> Yeah, let's see here. Okay. For Stephanie, Stephanie Colleen would like to know what is a thread director? Oh, a thread director is this little gadget here. Um, this is a double actually. It's a double thread director, so which means it holds two spools of thread. But if you've ever tried using um what is this thread? Metallic. Metallic threads <laughs> or yeah, metallic threads and you have a terrible time running them and they break all the time and they're, they just are a pain in the butt. Um, if you have a thread director, they, you can run metallic thread. It's because the, 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 the spool shaft. is wound. Um, when they're wound at the factory, you know, they're kind of wound in this weird spirally kind of way. And the way they come off, it, they continue to twist when they come off the spool if you use them on your regular threads or your spool pin. And if you put them on these spool pins, they come off straight, exactly how they're wound at the factory. No so twist. then they don't have a twist. So they'll run through your thread guides and through your needle without breaking. Awesome. Now, staying on you, Stephanie, we have another question here from Liz. She would like to know, does the foot come in different shaft sizes? It does. We do four different shank heights. So we do a super short, a short, a mid shank, and a high shank. And then we also have different adapters. So depending on, like Bernina makes two different adapters. Um, and this is a Bernina adapter that's on connected to this foot here. Um, and then we make um, three, like three different adapters for the straight stitch only machines. 
So like I have a Juki 2200 and there's a special adapter for that. But any of the straight stitch only machines, there's an adapter because their needle position is dip different. So you need the adapter to go along with your foot in order to make them the needle come down through the center of the foot properly. Okay, great. Um, we also, uh, where is that at? We do have a question, a couple of questions for Julie from Off the Wall, but she was not able to get back on. Uh, she, again, she's kind of traveling while she was jumping on with this. So I will ask her to go back through the comments when she gets where she's going. And uh, anybody that had questions for her, I know she'll get back to you on those. Um, okay. Oh, Yasmita, Colleen would like to know, what is the large bag shown called and what is its code? CA375 and uh, it's Maxi Yazzie. Maxi Yazzie. Yeah. And I've already actually, received, I said I've already received quite a few orders for this bag in the last time while we've been waiting here. So obviously awesome. there's a lot of interest in this bag. Perfect. Um, let's see, uh, Stephanie, another question for Stephanie. Um, for the, I'm going to read it verbatim here from Deborah. She would like to know for the quilting rulers, will they fit domestic machines like Bernina? And I think you just answered that, that yes, you do have what we need for Bernina's because I'm a Bernina girl too. So that was a good yes. question. Yes. Um, Bernina's actually are, work perfectly because they already made the adapter prior to the feet coming out so that we could use aftermarket feet. So Bernina already made the part, you know, they've had it out for years and years. So we just, we just ordered them in. So we have them, they're on our website and you may already have one. Awesome. Um, Jan, uh, Dennis would like to know, he said he received your plastic template for the ring size. What is a good binding thimble? Uh, one without a rim on top. And it really will help you if you take a look as you're doing some binding stitching and see exactly where the needle hits as you're pushing it through. Are you going to hit on the side like this? Are you going to hit right exactly on the end? But any of the ones without the rim on top will work for doing bindings. Great. Um, Elizabeth would like to know, uh, for Yasmita, um, she would like to know, uh, do you sell embroidery patterns that are used on your bag? No, we don't. Uh, we do. Just give me a second and I'll show you something here. Um, all these patterns behind, when you look at everything that's behind me, this entire wall where there's sashiko embroidery, the bag I mentioned today that we're giving as a gift, someone picked and did some sashiko embroidery on it. Wow. Those are personal choices they're making. I know Sue Spargo and many other companies are running classes and selling these patterns as well. So just Google that and you will find. But sometimes if you just have some stash around and you just want to be a little creative. It doesn't matter about the design. Like we're getting a, a range of these type of sashiko patterns coming into the US where we'll be selling them as kits. They're still on their way. So we're about six weeks away. At some point on the show, I will introduce this whole range. And that just seems to be short projects, like an hour, two hours, where that gets you going. And this particular design is an Indigenous-inspired Australian design. And we're going to be preparing these for all these bags and selling them as kits at some stage. So we are approaching that whole area in the U.S., but it's getting them ready and moving the panels and the kits to the U.S. The bags are all there anyway. That's awesome. Um, let's see. I just saw. An, oh, Stephanie, what is your website? Um, www.ferrellscountrystitching.com. So and remember, guys, no G, no G. Right. No G. And you can get to all their websites quickly right from the mall. Remember, there's a link when you go to Quilt Craft and Sew Mall, you'll see the Wild Wednesday pink logo. There's a link right below that. And when you click on that, you're going to get to all four of today's vendors quick and easy. And Stephanie, just to clarify, any machine anyone has, they can just contact you for assistance with if they need an adapter or which foots to buy, yes. correct? And, and even on our website, there, when there's a spot that they can, and we always ask everybody. So when you order a foot, it's going to ask you what kind of machine you have. That way we double check 
to be sure that you're getting the right foot for your machine. That's awesome. And, and Dennis actually asked, and this is a good question. Um, she got He got the small foot for his rose, but now he has a designer Topaz 40. Is that foot going to work for it? They're both Husqvarna machines. Yep. That's going to work for both machines. Awesome. And uh, Norma missed what today's special was, Jan, for you. So if you can show your thimble again and tell him that that uh, the little bunny thimble there, she's it's giving so free funny. shipping. Yeah, free shipping on the bunny rabbit thimble until May 1st. That's awesome. And uh, what is the price of that thimble, Jan? It's, a, it's $100. That's an awesome price for that, that workmanship. Is, yeah, that's amazing. Silver and I make them myself one at a time by yes. hand. Yes, perfect. Okay, um, I think that's all the questions. Again, if, if we missed anybody, I'll, I know all the vendors, when they have a few minutes, they go back through the comments to make sure that they didn't miss anybody. So I just want to thank all four of our vendors today for joining us. And uh, as we wrap up, just a couple of things real quick. Um, we do want to remind you that you need to make sure you get onto the Quilt Craft Sewing Festival website. And that lists all the dates of the shows that have been scheduled and where those are going to be. And we're so, so excited that we will be starting at the end of May in Boise. So once we get to that one, and once we remember how to do shows, it should be smooth sailing through the rest of the year. And uh, don't forget that, again, you can easily get to all four of the vendors today by clicking on that link below the Wild Wednesday special. But also make sure while you're at the mall, you know, we have also the weekly specials tab. Um, I believe it's like a starburst that says weekly specials. There are generally like nine to 12 specials on there every week. They change on Friday. And I tell you, I personally have taken advantage of some of those amazing specials. So be sure that when you're done shopping with today's vendors, that you check the weekly specials. And then of course, when you're done with that, you want to check out all the rest of the vendors in the mall. Now, um, before we go, we just always like to end by telling you guys how much we truly, truly appreciate you. Um, you know, our viewership is going up every week and we love that so much. We hope you will share with your friends, let everybody know about uh, watching us live um, because they have to be live to be considered uh, part of the drawing. So that's always a perk for those of you that are hanging in here with us. It's exciting every week. We see so many new faces, but we also have a really nice group of regulars that I get all excited when I see all the regulars there's names popping up. And uh, I think that's about all we have today. I got Wade here wants to say hi. Come here, Wade. Come here. He's been dying to say hello to everybody. So Wade, can you look up there and say hi? Can you say hi to the people? <laughs> we don't let him, normally don't let him be in here during the show, but we're having a lot of wind and he gets a little scared. So he had to come and say hi to you guys. So everybody, we thank you again so much for joining us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week right here on the Quilt Craft Sewing Festival Facebook page at two o'clock Pacific time for Wild Wednesday Live. So in the meantime, everybody go out and have a creative week. And thank you so much. Bye-bye now. Bye.